So since 2020 has come to a close, I've decided to take a look at some of the best-selling cars of the year. And what I noticed is absolutely insane. Now, people obviously love or hate Tesla, but there's one thing you can't deny. Tesla has some of the best-selling cars in the world. So according to this post here from November 2022, which has sales numbers up to the third quarter of 2022 as far as I know, the Tesla Model Y and Model 3 were the fourth and fifth best-selling cars in the world, which is so crazy. Now, obviously, these numbers can change for the fourth quarter of 2022, but they probably won't have changed a lot. Obviously, electric cars are pretty polarizing in the car enthusiast world. Some people love them because they're actually turning out to be pretty decent performance cars, and some people hate them because they're just soulless, depressing pieces of technology. But today I thought, could we actually build a better electric car than Tesla? What's up guys, Rai here, and welcome back to some more automation and of course, BeamNG Drive. In front of us is a very generic SUV body, and that's going to be the most soulless car basically ever. The goal today is to make an electric car. I want it to still look pretty cool. I'm pretty inspired looks-wise, at least by the likes of the Hyundai Ioniq cars or other electric cars like this or this. So I want to go ahead and do some sort of maybe retro future style like the Ionics, but in a full-sized SUV package. But it's also going to be even more depressing than the Hyundais or any other electric car. It's going to be a front-wheel drive, cookie-cutter crossover, so right here, it's 2020, we got the model 79, trim 82, no engine name, no engine variant name. First thing we need to choose is our panel material. So the goal is to make a very soulless car. And to do that, we are going to use partial aluminum body panels. It's going to be a monocar chassis with, with AHS steel as well. It's going to be a front transverse engine with double wishbone up front and maybe some torsion beam in the rear, which sounds really cheap and depressing. And that's the goal. Next up is the engine. In automation, you can only make gas cars. But in the newest big update for automation, they actually allowed you to convert your car to electric in the game itself. So I'll show you how that works later on. But for now, just trust me. It's going to be an inline four engine, aluminum, turbocharged, four valve, whatever. It doesn't really matter what we choose. It'll be a two liter turbocharged inline four. It sounds reasonable. It sounds fine. Just remember, guys, this car is meant to be as soulless as possible. We'll just go from forge, 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 forge. It's all fine. Everything else is fine here. Right to aspiration, turbocharged for that extra power, your intercooler, and just like some just generic run of the mill car stuff like uh, headers and exhaust and all that stuff. It doesn't actually matter. The car makes 282 pound feet of torque right now. It seems pretty fine, right? How this works is when you convert the car to electric for BMG Drive, it takes its peak torque and turns that into the electric car's peak torque over a broader torque curve. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it a little more power because I think we need definitely a little more torque in this thing. Doesn't really matter what fuel type we use at all. Just give it a bit more boost. 350 pound feet of torque and 340 horsepower. Now the horsepower will be changed in BMG, so it doesn't actually matter that much. And same with like the RPM limiter and all that jazz. But for right now, it's fine. 350 pound feet of torque. We'll see how that looks in BMG drive. But before we continue with today's build, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor. If you guys don't know, Buildbox is a zero code game engine that can help you start to create your own games for free right now. So on screen here is a game I actually made in under 30 minutes. So the point of the game is to collect as many diamonds as possible while still dodging the cones. I'm not very good at the game myself, but you know, I'll give it a try. So we just grab that one here. We grab that one. We grab that one and we crashed. So basically the car explodes when you crash and you have to restart the game if you want to play again. But we actually collected three points, which isn't terrible. The game itself took me literally 30 minutes or less to create. You guys are now seeing on screen part of the time lapse of me creating the game itself. It was so easy. There was zero code required. All you do is drag and drop functions. Buildbox also has a huge asset library with free and paid for assets, which allows the games to be better and you can make them faster as well. I also want to point out guys that a few weeks ago, I actually did another video where I featured a game made using Buildbox. It's called Tractor Rush 2 and it's available for iOS and Android. I I mention it again because I want you guys to realize how absolutely insane it is that that game was created using no code at all. So if you guys are interested in making games at all, Buildbox is 100% the tool for you. Again, it's totally free to start using it. Buildbox also has tools to help you publish your own games, and it is genuinely the easiest platform I've ever used to create games. So again, a huge shout out to Buildbox for sponsoring the video, but now let's get back to some automation. We're going to go ahead and make it front wheel drive with a 10 speed dual clutch. It actually doesn't matter what transmission you choose um, because all the cars are converted to a one speed transmission in BMG drive. Doesn't actually matter. We'll give it no differential actually. Open diff. It's going to have medium compound tires. 
with 245s front and rear with 20 inch wheels and a little bit smaller. Four piston vented discs up front and two pistons in the rear. We could probably even go for like drum brakes in the rear because electric cars have regen braking. Some electric cars actually have drum brakes. I think the Volkswagen ID line of cars has a few cars at least with drum brakes and we'll go ahead and do that as well. That sounds more depressing than any other brake choice. It's going to be fully clad under a tray with like lower cooling airflow because we don't actually need it. You know, we'll do a seven row, two plus three plus five, a seven row crossover or seven C, a seven row. Oh my gosh. No, a seven C crossover standard and basic because this thing is going to be just a generic car here with electric power steering, not variable. So even more soulless and depressing than before. No launch control, just ESC, standard safety and like there's some really basic suspension set up here because that's all you really need. So right off the bat here, the Model 79 Trim 82 makes 340 horsepower. It weighs 3,600 pounds, which is actually pretty light for a car in today's modern world. So I believe it adds weight and beam and G. And if it doesn't, this is going to be a very light electric car, but that's okay. It costs $19,000. So I think we can go ahead and probably try to increase the cost a bit and tweak some other things of the car. And so I did a bit of work. Now the car costs $43,000 and it gets 30 MPG, but also fuel economy doesn't actually matter because it's an electric car and it doesn't run on gasoline. It's also got 84 reliability, which is pretty good. Electric cars actually have good reliability. Ability. It just when things do break, they can be pretty gosh darn expensive. I did up the power actually a little bit. Now it makes 363 horsepower and 370 pound feet, which is a fair bit of torque, I think, for the electric car, but we'll see in Beam and G, obviously. It's still got 245 tires. It's still front wheel drive, and it weighs now 3,900 pounds, which is like a possible weight for an electric car. I think the brand for this vehicle is gonna be a neon branded car, which is my Chinese electric car company, which fits the bill because this is a Chinese electric car. And what they do is basically copy other cars' designs because it's a Chinese electric car company, and all neon cars have the stupidest names possible. I think my previous two were called the Masquerade and the Extravaganza, which is sort of like a theme around some sort of get-together or party. And I think this is going to be the Neon Jamboree, because nothing says electric car like Jamborees. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, their cars are called like the Q, the QS, the QSR, etc. So this is the Q, this is the base model. So the Jamboree Q, I I'm not too sure why, but that's, that's what they're called. So this is the Neon Jamboree Q. I'm going to try to do an interior for this car. It's going to be probably not a crazy in-depth interior, but it's going to be an interior nonetheless. So we'll design this car in a time lapse and then we'll hop into Beam and G and see how this generic, boring, soulless car drives. So sit back, relax guys, and enjoy. So we are now starting the design for the Jamboree Q. And the first thing I do for the car is, is design the front end. So I sort of shape out the front bumper, the headlights, the top front fascia of the car as well. So the headlights are actually going to be in the lower front fascia. The DRLs, daytime running lights, will be in the top area of the car as well. Uh, adding a neon badge to the hood. I have changed the car to a leather texture to make it a bit easier to actually see the vehicle itself. I'm now actually trimming and designing the lower front fascia, including the front sort of bumper sort of style uh, for designing, as well as the, the front grille and the front headlights are going to be worked on as well, I think, a little bit here. Adding some wipers to the front of the car, going back and adding a bit more details to the front bumper. A lot more details, actually, sort of trimming it out like doubly as far as it was before. Adding some roof rails and going back to the headlights just for a second and retrimming the front end even more than that. Now, I actually start off and actually intricately build the front light bar as well as the front LED light pixels so that the pixels are actually the, he the headlight projectors and the bar is the daytime running light. Now what I'm doing is giving the car a bit of fender flares because this is of course a crossover and crossovers need to look a little bit rugged as well. I changed the car to a bright yellow for now, adding a bit of side skirts on the car too, adding some rear cladding to the car, lifting the car just a little bit I did, uh, onto the back end. Now I do the back end of the car um, and it's a similar style to part of the front end, the lower front end of the car. And I, 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 it's fine, you know, it looks fine, kind of weird, I don't mind it, but the back of the car, I think it looks great. We got the Jamboree badge, we got the license plate mount, and doing the same sort of rear bumper as the front. So I go ahead and have the taillights like this for now. I redo them actually totally after, and you'll see at the end here, in some pictures and stuff, I add a charging port for the car, adding some more details to the rear bumper of the car, restarting the whole thing now, it looks like. I make it similar to the front end in a lot of ways, but I think just a little, little bit more rugged because the back end of the car has to be a bit more tough and rugged. Adding some badging to the car, adding a bit more details to the rear now, like the front end has that trimming on the sides of the, uh, the sort of bumper area. Adding glass, of course, to the front end and actually properly fixing the headlights in the front. Now I've restarted the back end taillights. Okay, so here's where it is. I actually redo the entire back end taillights. 
um, into some lower mounted uh, actual brake lights, and we have a top light bar, which is also the, the daytime running light slash turn signal for the rear end of the car. I'm also going to add fog lamps in the bumper after, I think, as well, and just sort of trimming out the rear. I also want to point out that the car actually has an interior now, so it's got a pretty basic interior that you'll see a little bit more in Demon G Drive, but it's a 7 seat crossover, at least 7 seats actually now, with a proper dash setup and an actual proper interior. It's not the most detailed, but it's there. It looks kind of cool, I think. And this is, of course, the Neon Jamboree Q. I've also made a QS and a QSRE model as shown here, which is the high performance model, which is one of the models we're going to be testing out in Beeman G Drive. So we're here in Beeman G Drive with the Neon Jamboree. And of course, I wanted to start this off with it being as serene as possible, because that's kind of what EVs are all about. Uh, so we're going to walk up to the Jamboree here. I did actually make an interior for the car. It looks pretty good. I think overall the vehicle looks pretty decent. I changed the taillights. The interior is all there. It's very, very simple though. There's not a ton to it. It's not like the best done, but there's a basic interior so you can at least sort of enjoy it. So we're inside the car now. I do want to point out the interior. So the interior is, it works, it functions, but it also doesn't really function. So if you go into the, uh, the front seat view here, <laughs> the camera's actually behind the seat, which is absolutely hilarious. Like we can look at the window fine, but yeah, the seat does not work. So if you go in this camera, it works a little better, but it's it's the hood cam and it's not as cool. So if we take this thing for a cruise, and I'll show you guys how the torque sort of works for this car. So if you see the black is the torque, the red is the power, uh, the blue is the, the motor's RPM. If we're just sort of rolling here and give it a little bit of throttle, we're making around 100 or so PS, or about 100 and so horsepower, and about 150 or so newton meters of torque. So not really a lot of torque, but this thing is decently quick. And if we do floor it here, it does jump up to about 400 newton meters of torque. And about 300 or so, 350 horsepower. So it's pretty decent. It's a pretty decent amount of horsepower. It's only front wheel drive, which is so depressing. I also want to note this car actually drives very well for what it is. And next up, this is the West Coast USA drag strip. This is the Jamboree QS version. So it's a slightly different version of the car here. Um, it just it looks right. There's no differences really besides I think the wheels maybe. Uh, this is the amped up version with I think around 550 horsepower, which is a, a fair bit more than the 350. This one's also four wheel drive, so four wheel drive, 500 ish horsepower. Uh, we're gonna do a drag race here and see what it does. We're just gonna floor it. It's not that quick off the line though. No wheel spin at all, but zero to 60 in around 4.8 seconds. So it is respectable. Top speed is still quite slow, but 150, 160 kilometers an hour, I think for this one's well, 160, 170, maybe more. I don't know. It's not crazy fast, but 4.8 seconds is pretty decent for a mid range crossover. But I also made one more version, one with even more power. This is it. This is the QSRE. This is the big boy. It looks the same as all the others because in reality, these are just generic cookie cutter electric cars. But this is one with, I think, 700 horsepower. Uh, it's got like, what, like 1,900 newton meters, so about 900 newton meters of torque. This is the Neon Jamboree QSRE. I love the names. I love how terribly stupid they are. But this is a 700 horsepower crossover. Uh, it's pretty quick. It doesn't feel quick, though, which is the thing. In BMG, it's got a hard time really replicating the actual feel, so we're going to floor it here in a drag race. It doesn't feel that quick. But when you look at it, it does 0 to 100 in 2.99 seconds. Top speed is around 160, 170 kilometers an hour as well. Uh, this one's actually, I think, slightly slower top speed than the previous model. But 12.2 isn't even that great in a quarter mile, but it's breaking into the threes, 0 to 60. It's weird, you can't actually really brake boost these cars that much. There's no launch control that I can really find with the electric cars, but it's still very quick regardless. I honestly thought what better way to test a 4,500 pound electric crossover than in a very tight twisty Italian map, uh, which, which seems like exactly where this thing is supposed to be. This thing's also got, of course, 700 horsepower, gobs of torque, it's four wheel drive. We're gonna launch it here in the Italian through the center map. We're gonna just drive it in, I guess, manual. There's no manual mode actually, what am I talking about? This thing is just rapid. It is so rapid. Top speed is abysmal, but it's very quick. And okay, this is where it gets scary. I don't actually know this map that well. I know this gets narrow here. Oh god, the brakes. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay. It feels like it just locks up totally. It's got like no ABS at all. I mean, it does, but it feels like it doesn't. Oh my god. I, I'm, if you guys can't see, I'm actually applying very little braking pressure. 
So note to self, make sure to upgrade your brakes when you're putting like 700 horsepower behind a family crossover. Gonna break. Okay, we trains traction control. Maybe that'll help a little bit here, but I, I don't think it will. Yeah, this thing, like, it drives pretty well. Like, it, feel, it drives fine, just the brakes are abysmal. Like 28% and we totally locked up there and skidded. This is so narrow, I, I hate this with a passion. I think we're just gonna lock up the brakes every single time now because uh, I'm done. I'm, I'm already sick of driving this car. The brakes are not good. They are not where they should be. That's the goal. I have not tested this thing once. Oh! Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Nothing wrong here at all. It still handles the same, which is, you know, fine. It's fine. It's, it's your average crossover, except it's got 700 horsepower. No! No! We, like, got a little bit of air there, and it just didn't turn that great. And I also didn't turn that great. Gosh darn it, this thing is not good! But I think the electric motor sounds kind of cool. But this is sketchy. Super sketchy in first person. Or in, like, a, like a, a, a hood view. It's very sketchy here. Yeah, the braking really needs to be addressed. They are very... I did actually make the brakes larger for this model. Uh, and the previous model as well, but clearly not big enough. We've already lost a tire, which we're gonna have to deal with that, I guess. Genuinely, I've never had a worse braking experience. Oh my god, the brakes are so terrible. They are not fit for this vehicle. No! I don't know this track at all, please. <laughs> Forgive me. This thing is just not great. There's the end. And this is actually still my best time ever, I think. It's still my best time ever. Beating even the SX Turbo, which is like a, an 80s French, you know, kind of luxury car. Which actually drove pretty well. And I think we could probably get like 130 if we were actually driving and not crashing. But 148, I'll take that. The regen braking locks up the brakes. The regen braking, yes, there is regen braking. It locks up the brakes. That is so terrifying. That might be probably one of the issues we had. So if we're just driving here at 120 kilometers an hour, you know, like freeway speeds, 110 maybe. Let off the gas here, let the regen braking. It locks up the wheels. There is some burnt rubber from our tires getting locked up. That's actually crazy. That is so, so unsafe. I love it. I absolutely love this thing. I love the design of it too. I think this thing looks really cool. So lastly, we are here in the Jamborina with the QSRE Jamboree. Yeah, the, the interior, you know, it's um, it's build your own. It's a build your own interior car. Uh, and that's okay. The, the front looks actually pretty gosh darn cool. So we're gonna launch this thing in the Jamborina, see how far it gets. My bet is gonna be like, what, 350, 400 maybe? I don't know, something like that. 350, let me know. I also want to give a huge shout out again to BuildBox for sponsoring the video. Seriously, guys, check them out. Link will be in the description down below. I think 350. That's my last guess. 350. Wow, it's actually holding it pretty well. It is a heavy car. But 290 or so. Not bad. Not bad. And it's absolutely destroyed now. It's fine. I bet it'll run after this. I bet it'll still drive. I mean, the one wheel does. The one thing I like about the electric cars, at least in this game, is like, we only have one wheel that spins, but it, it's still a wheel that spins. <laughs> this is perfectly fine. It's definitely lost a bit of its, its momentum now, I think, but it's perfectly fine. Thank you guys so much for watching, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time.